Well, hey there, YouTube. It's Petey Two Finger. I'm back from a short break. We said goodbye to Mom. Uh, participated in celebrating her life at the funeral and the interment, and I'm back here on the 14th. Today, I want to talk about Columbine. There's this Gus Van Zandt 2003 film. I've seen it twice. It's challenging. There's not very much dialogue. There's a lot of long shots of people walking down hallways. But it is a uh, artistic, it's a very, very well put together movie that's lacking one very imperative element. The White Hats. Now, there was another a predecessor of this 89 film, uh, which dealt with the underlying social problems of Northern Ireland. It depicts 18 murders uh, using a steady cam with not much dialogue. And the idea behind this is the elephant in our living room, which um, Gus Van Sant's movie, it, it had a lot of arty stuff in it. Like there's this scene where there's a dog jumping around and uh, you your eyes pay attention to that dog, but you don't really pay attention to as they're coming walking up with their rucksacks filled with weapons. Now, uh, I, I have to... Uh, I have to state this. Uh, I'm not here. I'm not here to. Uh, this is this is from Elephant, the original 1989 Elephant. I'm I, I don't have a deviant art uh, fan page where I draw pictures of these two characters. I really don't even like saying their names. These guys. Uh, that's not them. This is a movie that's highly rated. I'm going to be checking that out. But um, I, I do not believe that they were heroes. I believe that this was a tragedy. These guys here were, uh, they were just the worst. You never take, you never uh, pick up a weapon to solve your, your issues. But at the same time, you know, I've got kids, I've got grandkids. And my thing was always like, well, what, what was going on? at this place what what bred this because this type of thing doesn't happen when you have happy children and these guys were not happy and we're gonna we're gonna discuss a bit more about this this woman well uh, she just killed herself she flew out there on the 20th anniversary or something something like that she made some threats like she was gonna go shoot up a school and then put in a gun in her mouth and took her life what a waste what a waste, you know. Uh, and if you, it's interesting because if you take a look at the 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 pick people we lost, none of them look like alpha male jock types. They really don't. They look like the people that were picked on. But the 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 injured, the people who were injured, they all look like jocks and cheerleaders. So it's very interesting. You know, people uh, when you look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia kind of denies the fact that they were bullied. Which, if you look around, you'll find different takes on it. And I think what what where I tend to believe the truth lays in the fact that these guys were, they were bullied. But they were smart and they uh, were charismatic. They They weren't really that geeky and that much losers. They were computer guys, so... They ended up starting their own little clique, and they were popular in that, you know? But the fact remains, if you take the white hats out of the situation, if we have the teachers, coaches, and uh, parents doing their jobs, where we don't have this unbelievable segregation, worshiping of the alpha male, pecking order, uh, tolerating jocks picking on the weak kids because that's the thing about jocks they are the biggest cowards they will never go and pick on someone their own size they will always go after some skinny little kid and pick on him and i just have to say the only bigger coward than those type of jocks are these two guys because you never pick up a handgun to solve your problems so i really want to be clear about that this video is not a, it has nothing to do with me championing these guys and saying they were good, okay? What I'm saying is something was going on at the school. People don't like talking about it. Oftentimes it'll get covered over. They'll go, no, those guys weren't bullied. They weren't bullied. So I found this article here, 
and I thought it would be interesting to read some of this. This is Columbine researcher um, U. K. Bluebow. Columbine researcher. Seven months ago, this was published. A good deal of the harassment was verbal, with kids picking on Eric and Dylan because of their style of dress, musical tastes, and athletic ability. And that style of dress, that came about with that trench coat mafia, which is a reaction to this uh, kids wearing uh, uniform, the white hat thing. And that's a problem. You can't tolerate, just because these guys are on the football team, they can't, they can't be allowed to run the show in the school and pick on whoever they want without consequence. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm here to discuss. I know what that feels like. I grew up in that situation. Eric and Dylan were picked on by jocks during their bowling classes because the jocks thought they could play the game better, and it didn't help that both boys bowled unusually with Dylan tossing his ball like a softball and Eric throwing his like a basketball. So I believe they signed up for that. A student in Dylan's gym class said Dylan wasn't very coordinated. Everyone made fun of him in class. They called him Stretch. They called him Jolly Green Giant. And here we see, we are Columbine, we are rebels, family honor and respect. Now, how are you going to feel if you're not a rebel? Let's say you were born uh, a skinny little guy, and, and maybe when you were uh, in your 30s, you put some weight on. You know, I can identify with that. Uh, how are you going to feel looking at this? You don't have family, you don't have honor, you don't have respect, because you're not a rebel. I don't know. I don't know. I really question the uh, glorifying of the athlete. Jordan Grimm, a student who categorized himself as a jock prep state, he would make fun of Dylan every time he saw him wearing his trench coat in the cafeteria. Ryan Waldo stated that Dylan once got into an argument about his AOL shirt after asking him what it meant because he wore it almost every day. Dylan told him it had to do with programming in an instant message group called Punchers and Progs. Ryan was on Dylan's hit list. Brett O'Neill said that Dylan was sort of the brunt of jokes. That he wouldn't make fun of him openly, but Dylan was aware of it. According to Eric, a group of boys once shot up Dylan's bicycle. Daniel Branford stated that Dylan once told her jocks were giving him trouble, but he didn't elaborate any further. Devin Adams said he was she was pushed up against his locker by a jock and called a fag lover for talking to Dylan. According to Brooks Brown, he, Dillick, Dylan, and Eric were outside smoking cigarettes when jocks drove past them and threw a glass bottle that shattered near Dylan's feet. Brooks was pissed, but Eric and Dylan didn't flinch. Dylan said it happened all of the time. Nathan Vanderall reported that Eric and Dylan were constantly picked on. Vanderall noted that a cup of fecal matter was thrown at them. Eric and Dylan had become the victims of a particularly humiliating incident in which they were surrounded in the cafeteria by students who squirted them with ketchup, laughed at them, and called them faggots. Teachers were present at the time, but did nothing to intervene. And again, I stress, <coughs> I'm not here to uh, uh, glamorize or make any excuses for what these guys did. I think it was uh, the worst possible choice they could have made. Um, and that this was the ultimate act of cowardice. Um, but at the same time, uh, what would have happened if teachers did intervene? If this type of behavior was not tolerated at Columbine? I, I firmly believe that this never would have happened. That's what I'm here to say. Sue Klebold said that Dylan came home from school with spots of ketchup all over his shirt. She asked him what happened. He said it was the worst day of his life and didn't want to talk about it. According to Richard Perry, Eric had constantly been picked on, taunted, and had food thrown at him by some of the other students. During the sophomore year, someone named Ryan was friends with Eric. Ryan said he would sometimes join in on any teasing against Eric. Uh, one student said that he spent most of his time in gym class teasing Eric because he had a big head and a very skinny body. Another student said he had been relentless in his abuse of Eric during gym class, and the entire class ridiculed Eric for not being good at sports. Now again, this type of talent uh, is something you're born with. 
There's people that just can't catch and throw, and then there's people that are really good at that. So my problem is when then that becomes the, the standard by which you're judged, you know? And that's the fucked up part of it. I'm not saying organized sports is bad, but it can, it can get perverted when, uh, when we let it, you know what I mean? Another student in Eric's gym class said that Eric won a dodgeball game. Some jocks ganged up on him during the second game and hit him in the face with a few balls. After gym, they pushed him into the lockers. Eric had a slight chest deformity. It wasn't that noticeable. It was just sunken in a bit. But when he would take his shirt off in PA, PE class, the bullies were ready and waiting to mock him. A student said it was routine for jocks to line up across the hall, one next to the other, forcing students to have to go all the way down the line, all the way down, all the way down another hallway to get around them. This video suggests that Eric did not want to give in to their intimidation. Not going to watch that. Uh, Dylan was more likely to ignore the bullying, but Eric tried to stand up for himself on several occasions. Eric once challenged a wrestler who was known for harassing the trench coat mafia to a fight in the school parking lot. It was called off because the other boy brought friends for backup. So we see who the true cowards really are, just like I said. One student would always make fun of Eric's clothes, so Eric told him to shut the F up. Another day, a bully came up to him and said, what's up, in a smart-ass tone, so Eric yelled at him. Um, Dylan's Dan Lab punched Eric in the face, which resulted him in ending up on Eric's hit list. Dan wanted off the list. Eric agreed to take, take him off if he could punch him in the face. If he showed some respect to Eric and Dylan and met, never made a smart-ass remark about them. Um, Eric once told a bully, every day you pass me and make fun of me, saying, Ramstein sucks. Why do you do this crap, asshole? What did I do to you? The student sarcastically replied, oh man, you're so cool, you're my idol. Dylan approached them, seeming to back up his friend. In March of 1999, Eric was observed walking down the hallway with several students following him and taunting him, saying, the war is over, you can go home. Eric yelled, shut up, a-holes. According to Dustin, Eric Harris, Dustin Harrison, Eric and Dylan would both get picked on during their classes and the teacher did not care or do anything to stop it. Again, I'm not saying that these guys were brave, wise, or that they made the right choice. I'm saying that these two kids, I'm not saying their names, out of respect for the people that lost their lives, I'm not going to glorify any coward killers by repeating their names and giving them fame. I will not do that. These two pieces of shit cowards might not have been pushed past the brink to make the worst possible choice if, in fact, their teachers had chosen to care and done something to stop it. Chris Morris said that Eric was constantly picked on by the jocks because he was small and that Eric was depressed as a result of this. After Dylan got in tr trouble for scratching a locker, he paced the dean's office and started the cuss. According to Dean, he was very upset with the school system and the way CHS handled people, including the people that picked on him and others. On February 20th, 1999, Eric and Dylan visited the dean to help regarding a problem with another student. The boys told the dean that the student was parking too closely to one of their cars and was mouthy with them. The dean told the dean claimed to have told the student's counselor. Molly Worksler said some of the teachers at Columbine High School picked favorites and that Eric and Dylan were not one of their favorites. She said a female employee who ran the computer lab would unjustly pick on Eric and Dylan. They'd glare at her when this happened, but say nothing. Alyssa Scheller and Eric said Eric did not like their German teacher because she would always pick on Eric herself and Christy Epling. In Christy's yearbook, Eric wrote, Frau sucks, but German rules. Dylan often slept in his calculus class when this happened. The teacher would yell at him and embarrass him. 
Before the massacre, a teacher's aide believed bullying was a serious problem at Columbine and raised the issue of bullying at a faculty meeting, but no one acted on her complaint. And again, I am not saying that these two guys are heroes or what they did was good. I'm saying that they were fucking cowards and they never, ever, ever should have ever entertained any of these evil thoughts that, that came down upon them. What I'm saying is that before the massacre, this teacher aide believed bullying was a serious problem and brought it up at the meeting that someone should have acted on her complaint. And perhaps then I would not be forced to make this video today. Because whether you believe it or not, this thing, this incident is the blueprint. This is like this happened and now school shootings are, are just a regular thing, you know. So this is like the penultimate thing, you know, and, and I'm just just commenting on what I ran into today when I looked it up, okay? So maybe get off of my dick. Eric and Diller's manager at the Blackjack, which was the pizza restaurant they worked at, said the boys would gripe about how they did not feel they were being treated fairly and were unjustly persecuted at school. Everyone is always making fun of me because how I look, how fucking weak I am and shit. I will get you all back. Ultimate fucking revenge here. You people could have shown more respect, treated me better, asked for my knowledge or guidance more, treated me more like a senior. And maybe I wouldn't have been so ready to tear your fucking heads off. People make fun of me constantly, therefore I get no respect, therefore I get fucking pissed. If people would give me more compliments, all this shit might be avoidable, but probably not. Whatever I do, people make fun of me, sometimes directly to my face, but I'll get revenge soon enough. Fuckers shouldn't have ripped on me so much. I hate you people for leaving me out of so many fun things and don't fucking say, well, that's your fault because it isn't. You have my phone number and I asked and all, but no, 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 no. Don't let that weird looking era kid come along. Oh, fucking no. According to Tom Klebold, Dylan denied being bullied himself, but he said people would pick on Eric. Dylan has possibly referenced bullying these quotes from his journal. Go to school, be scared and nervous, hoping that people can accept me and that I can accept them. Nobody accepting me, even though I want to be accepted. I swear, I'm like an outcast. Only four or five people here didn't rip on me. Four or five people in the whole state of Colorado. Eric Harris. Whenever I started a new school, people would see me and say, there's that fucking scrawny white kid. I'd had enough to go through with that shit so many times. I just knew I wanted to kill those fuckers who fuck with me. It's going to be like doom. Being shy didn't fucking help. I'm going to kill all of you. You've been giving a shit for years. During the basement tapes, they mention enemies that abused them and friends that didn't do enough to defend them. Multiple times throughout the ma massacre, Eric and Dylan mentioned jocks and people with white hats and said it was for everything they were put through for the past four years. During the massacre, Eric told Bree Pascal this was all happening because people were mean to him last year. I got all of these from Rita Gleason's book. I recommend it. It's very fact-based. So this book is called Evidence Ignored, What You Might Not Know About Columbine. Evidence Ignores provides an unfiltered account of the events that led to the tragedy at Columbine High School. Despite the mountains of police reports, journal writings, video, and audio transcripts that have been released, the general public knows only what has been presented to them, information distilled by a variety of law enforcement officials and journalists. No one understanding of this senseless attack can be gained. No understanding of this senseless attack can be gained if we ignore all vital pieces of information. Evidence Ignore seeks to set the record straight outlining all that is known about your, those two guys in hopes that it would help open a dialogue of how we as a society can better recognize at-risk kids and step in before we face yet another Columbine. So uh, go team. And with that, um, I'll just say a little bit of a personal thing. Uh, my younger brother has a... Uh, 
ministry through the church where he does a hockey camp and he also coaches hockey and his thing has always been teamwork but you don't pick on the little guy uh he teaches his kids that uh trash talking is not allowed uh, he he teaches them teamwork and competition but it's not in that mean-spirited thing and, and there's none of that, uh, none of that bullshit is tolerated. So uh, I really admire him for doing that. And that's really, it seems to be non-existent. That as long as the team wins, they don't care how mean these the, the jocks are to the, to the geek kids. You know, I went to a school that was like that and they... They wanted me to play on their basketball team so bad. They all they kept coming at me until the uh, you know, like the associate pastor was bugging me about it, and then the the main guy pastor cornered me in the bathroom, and so I joined. After he approached me, I joined and I played one game. I had came down with a fever. I know I was over. I was like probably a hundred, two hundred, three degrees, and I went out and played this game. And it was horrific, and I never played again. And after after that, I was uh, I was picked on for the rest of the four years that I was at that school. The associate pastor kicked kicked me in the knees as hard as he could, and during a soccer game once. And uh, it was it was a very difficult time for me uh, being picked on at that school for that many years. And more recently, one of those guys passed away, and a girl came in and defended her. Uh, said uh, that she was picked on for the whole time she was there, and no one did anything about it. And everyone jumped on her shit and said, uh, "Hey, this guy just passed away. You're not allowed to talk about it." And uh, blah 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 blah. And I just felt really bad for her because I had went through that at that same institution. And I knew that this guy that died was one of the main guys that had picked on her. And I, I felt if I would have been in there when that conversation would have went on, I, I would have sided with her. I really would have. But I came upon it after the fact and I befriended her. I made a video, a private video, and sent it to her. And we're, we're buddies on Facebook now and... Um, it's just kind of funny how the whole, uh, it, here it is, you know, we're adults now. This is many, many years later, and she brought it up, and, and ev everybody jumped on her shit. She wasn't allowed to talk about it. So that's why I'm here, to speak up for the people, uh, the victims of this type of bullying, because the status quo is completely the other way around. The status quo is, is if the bully speaks up, they get or the the bullied, the victims speak up, they get punished, they get they get called out, they get humiliated, and uh, this type of stuff is not only tolerated, but it's kind of encouraged by the faculty. That's 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 what I found. And uh, as far as that white hat thing goes. Uh, I'm sure that's not the only school where this type of behavior is tolerated, but uh, if your kid's in some sort of school like that, you should get him out. If he's not an athlete and you're just sending him to the school every day because that's the easiest choice for you, well, you may end up regretting it one day. And if you're involved in sports or if you're a coach or something like that, think about what I talked about with my brother and his ministry and how he teaches his kids, how he coaches his uh his kids that the main the main thing is teamwork and that it's uh you're not allowed to, to bully you're not allowed to pick on someone because they're underneath you or they're not as good at shooting the puck or whatever anyway that's my take on it um you should check out that elephant movie if you haven't seen it yet probably both of them are worth your time uh but be ready it's very slow slow moving movie and um, ultimately, you know, it's a tragedy, but it's an even bigger tragedy that everyone covered for them. Everyone covered for the White Hats in this situation. So we weren't able to learn a lesson from it. Okay, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. 
Take care of yourselves. Hug your pets and be nice. Peace.